And welcome to the first ever Tutorial Tuesdays. I'm Kyle Barton and today I'm going to walk you through an edit from start to finish on a slot canyon that I visited when I was out in um, on my Utah trip, but the slot canyons in particular were out in Arizona. This slot canyon is called Secret Canyon and as I was walking through it I noticed this particular shape in the sandstone um, looked like a heart as it was as winding through. Um, so I took some time and I set up and I captured an image there and we will uh, walk through that one today. So let's get started. Okay, so we're opening up the images in Lightroom here. Um, because of the high dynamic range in this set, um, I took uh, bracketed exposures. So this will underexpose the highlights and be able to let me recover the shadows very well. So down here, we've got a couple images. I'm going to just kind of show you what they all look like. I tend to underexpose my images. Um, I, I could do a better job making sure that they're more evenly exposed in the histogram, but I'm really afraid of blowing out those highlights. So uh, these three, these four images are all pretty dark. Um, but if I just highlight all of them and I right, right click and hit photo merge, we're going to do an HDR stack. One of those images doesn't work for this, so let me pull that one out. Well, I'll just stack two together. Okay, there you have it. We have a stacked set of images here. Um, you can see the highlights up here are brought in from the darker image and the shadows are retained. So I'm going to go ahead and click merge. Okay, so now those have been merged together. Um, they've also been stacked. So you can see this three icon here. Um, those images that were processed in the HDR sitting underneath that kind of keeps the, the timeline or the, the reel down here um, a little bit cleaner. So as I go in here and inspect this image, I can see there's um, a, a lens flare there. Let me brighten this up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Ooh, not that much. So yeah, I've got a little bit of flaring in here. I'm going to want to take care of that in Photoshop um, and get rid of that. Also, you can see here in the image, this is really the shape that caught my eye. Um, the canyon winds through here and this groove really highlighted kind of caught my eye at first and then with the similar transition here it, it makes kind of a heart shape to with me at least so i'm gonna try to emphasize this shape um, by doing some dodging and burning over in, in photoshop to really bring bring out the highlights and the shadows and really make this shape pop um, then I'm going to bring it back into Lightroom and we'll do some more edits. So let me go ahead and move that over to Photoshop now. Let me bring down that uh, brightness a little bit. Okay, now that we've got the image in Photoshop, we're going to do a little um, flare removal and then some dodging and burning. So let me first start with the flare. Um, I'm going to zoom in on that section. And Photoshop is pretty wonderful for being able to clone things out. Um, so let me go ahead and I will always start a new layer. Um, sorry. Duplicate the layer. And now I'm going to, on that layer, use the freeform lasso selection tool and select that. And I'm going to go over to edit. And instead of just going content aware fill, I like to do fill and then content aware. I, I usually get a better result that way. Um, this sampled some of here, so it, it didn't quite work out as well, but it did a decent job. Um, I could continue to go in here and further make smaller selections. 
and continue to do content aware fill. Um, but there's a point of diminishing returns there. So what I'm gonna move over to now is the clone stamp. So what this is gonna do is it's gonna sample another part of the image. So I'm gonna hit Alt and let's see, I will pick here. And then if I move that brush over to that spot, you can see that it's, it's essentially covering that up. So it's going to sample a part of the image that's over there. You can see that that little plus icon um, jumped out at you there. So I'm just gonna keep doing this. It's gonna keep moving around the image. Um, and it's gonna be pulling from that same equidistant spot um, away from where my cursor is to um, essentially paint over that spot. So if I move up here, it's going to um, show the plus out here on the left. It's gonna sample from there. That uh, looks better. So if I zoom back out, that kind of flare is now gone from the image. Um, and we can proceed with the dodging and burning. So with, with this, um, I learned this technique from Marco Grassi. Um, rather than using the dodging and burning tool, um, something that a process that I really like is doing the um, creating two layers, a, a, a dark and a light. So I'll just name this one dark and I'll duplicate that layer again. Um, and in each of these layers, I'm going to make an adjustment. So we will take the adjustment brightness and I will increase brightness by 50. And on this layer, I'm going to, I'll turn this off just so I can show you. Um, so this is the original layer adjustments, brightness, and I'll do negative 50. Now, I will add a, um, a masking layer on each of these and then invert it so that the masking layer disappears. I'm going to do that by hitting control I on a PC. Um, so now what I'm going to do is on these masking layers, I'm going to paint in in white um, with a brush the areas that I want that particular spot to come out with. So we'll start with the light areas and what I really want to do is I want to take a brush and I want to highlight I want to paint in um, kind of these these areas here to add additional contrast and pop to really make this shape um, come through so I've got my brush here um, I'm actually gonna start with a you know somewhere around here let's let's do yeah 50 50 percent capacity um, opacity sorry and I'm just gonna paint in here so you can see that that's bringing out the brightness of that area of the image. Um, I'm also going to come in here and I'm gonna bring that brush size down because this is a little bit big. Um, uh, now it's too small. So I'm gonna paint in here. Oops. I really need to get my drawing tablet up this mouse is all over the place. Um, so I've painted in there um, because that mouse is a little bit big. It looks a little sloppy. So I'm going to actually switch back over to black and I'm going to erase um, from the overages. And this is what I really like about doing it, the dodging and burning this way. Um, you can come in here and you can kind of go back and fix and erase and, and play around with it as you're going through. Um, so let me see how that looks. I can toggle that on and off. There you go. You can see that that, that 
highlight is starting to come through there. Um, I also want to bring in some more highlights through here and really get the contrast on this edge going. So I'm going to come up this and bring that through here. And I'm going to even this out a little bit more. So we're going to get that highlighted and kind of paint this edge a little bit more. And let's bring the opacity down and smooth this top section out a little bit because you can see that it's, you're almost seeing a different color here, at least I am. And there we go. Uh, let's, let's put a little bit more light in here. And that should be good. Now let's switch over to the dark section. Um, and we'll paint this in there's not a lot of places that I want to do a lot of darkening, but I do want to kind of bring some darkness in through here, some a bit more. So I want to bring the 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 eye into here. Um, actually, because this extends down past here, I do want to kind of darken through here, um, even though the light I should erase some of the lighter layer up here um, because that's essentially on top of this layer. Um, so if I pop back over here. I'm going to go back to black, kind of feather in uh, a little bit. That way it doesn't kind of bring your eye as far down and kind of keeps this shape a little bit more. I'm gonna come back in here. I will do a little bit more darkening in here. I wanna, I wanna keep some of the detail that was in here. kind of lost to the highlights and just kind of harden this section up here. Okay, now that we've got our lights and our darks done. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit more in here. Um, I want to further kind of shape this um, I think on the lights, I'm going to kind of increase my brush size a little bit more. Oh, not that much. Let's go with 500. And we'll keep that opacity and I'll just kind of brighten up here because this is a little bit dark. I want to I kind of unify this a little bit more. Um, I'll bring this in through here, kind of paint some more into that section. And then with the darks, I wanna bring this, this is a little bit distracting up here, so I will continue to bring this kind of dynamic vignette up through here. Uh, that's a little strong there, so let me make this brush even bigger. Let's do 900 this time. Smooth that out. And we'll just kind of carry this down through. All right, I think that that shape is finished. Um, now I want to add a an Orton glow here. Um, so I'm going to go over here and I'm going to use a um, extension, Weatherby's Pro Panel. Um, love using this to get that Orton effect in here. So I will throw that up into this section and. We're going to do a Orton effect on here. I'm going to stamp up and that's going to essentially collapse all of those and bring a layer up here to edit. Um, then I'll apply Orton Sharp to this. I'll leave the settings as they are. Mm -hmm. 
and you can see the effect that that had on the image. Um, it gives it kind of a soft, um, more ethereal glow to it, which is really what I want to get out of the top part of this image here um, into the canyon. And then we'll retain kind of the, some of the detail here that kind of leads with the diagonal lines into the frame. So with that, I'm done with Photoshop. I'm going to bring it back over to Lightroom and make some more global adjustments and finish it up. All right, now that we're back over in Lightroom, um, the first thing I want to do is I want to come in here and adjust some of the temperature. Um, I'm going to make it a little bit warmer. We'll bring up the temps about 14. All right, that kind of warms this up. Um, and now I'm going to, I'll go ahead and jump down. I want to keep going with the theme of the color here and I'll jump down to the split toning. Um, so I want to have some still cool shadows um, and those, those warmer highlights through here. So I'm going to take my shadows wheel and bring it around here and make some adjustments to add some, some blue hues into the shadows. Not too much, um, but then we'll counterbalance that with uh, some orange highlights. Bring that up and the mid-tones as well. Can make some, some more adjustments here. Too much red, we'll bring that back over to the orange side of things. This is a little bit red for my liking too. That there. Okay, um, and let's make some adjustments down here on the brightness. Pull those highlights up. And let's see what we want to do with the shadows here. Likewise, we'll do a little bit more pulling up of the shadows. Okay. I think I'm pretty happy with where that came out and we'll go back up to the main filter and start making some other global adjustments. Uh, I want to increase contrast. Again, that's really going to emphasize kind of this heart piece in the middle of the image. Um, let's do 17. Yeah, that looks good. I want to increase some of the highlights in here and really decrease some of the black. So I'll come in here and add some highlights and shadows I am going to bring down a little bit. Blacks, I'm also going to kind of crush these. Really add some, some more dramatic effect here. And then whites, um, because I brought the highlights up, I'm gonna bring these down a little bit just so to reduce kind of the, the harshness here. Not that much, let's do say negative nine and okay so I want to keep this ethereal look um, I'm going to bring the texture down globally and bring it down quite a bit here to keep this real soft light and it, give a little bit more flow to the sandstone um, clarity will, will drop a little bit just to kind of cut down on the harshness there and I think I think that's it for my global adjustments. Now I want to make some some localized uh, adjustments on here. So what I just did with all the softening, I want to bring this piece of the image back in with its texture. So I'm going to grab a linear gradient, really highlight through here, and we'll just we'll just add a little bit more texture back in. So I've done that. Um, that gives that a little bit more detail, and. I want to add another one. Um, if I, I want to continue to decrease some of the um, exposure here, but if I if I do this, it's it's doing it too much throughout here. So I'll make a another linear gradient, but it's going to be smaller, just kind of on the bottom here. Um, kind of stretch that out a little bit more and pull it back down. And here I'll decrease the exposure. But I want to keep some of those lines, those leading lines in. So let's increase contrast and let's do 
do a little bit more of the highlights to bring those back. All right, um, and now I want to add in some radial gradients here for the sun. So I'll create a radial gradient up here, really get some more glow going in through here. Uh, maybe not so big. All right, with this one, I want to warm up this section. So let's let's really crank this. Um, there we go. And we will bring up the contrast a little bit. And really dehaze. So I'm going to add haze back into these, this section here um, to get that kind of glow off of the sun. Some of that's a little harsh, so I'm going to bring down the whites and add in some blacks. You can see how that kind of brought up some more of that haze there. Um, highlights. Let's bring those up. And let's... Shadows we'll leave alone. I think it's a little bit big here, so let's kind of decrease that radius. All right. Um, now I'll add one final radial gradient. I want to kind of unify in here. So I'll put this across this section, both sides of the heart, and kind of unify the look here a little bit more. So I'm going to brain it, bring attention to it, not that much. Let's just do 0.5, half a stop. And we'll add in some contrast. Brighten up some of those, those highlights here. We'll add some more color back in. I really want to get it to be kind of its own, its own piece of the image. So if we give it some more warmth, then we're going to add a little bit of tint. Um, hearts are red, so let's kind of tint this a little bit. Tint's a very um, a dangerous thing to adjust, so we're not going to add a lot in here. Um, all right, um, I think that that looks probably pretty good. So with that, um, I think we're probably close to done. Let me, I do see quite a bit of brightness through here. So I want to maybe bring the exposure overall globally on the image down a little bit, but not that much. Let's go negative 0.2. All right, I think we're done. So here is the before after obviously HDR stacked and the after image. So I hope you enjoyed that tutorial. Um, I want to do more of these going forward. So I'll be recording some of my edits throughout my, my recent trip in Utah. Um, and we'll be posting these um, on Tuesdays. Might not be every week, but we will see how many I get done. So if you like this image, uh, this this video, um, please subscribe, like the video, um, throw a comment down below. Tell me what you liked about the edit. Is there anything you want to see me go in more depth on on another video? Um, yeah, and I will see you next time.